Um, earlier, Bill, you mentioned labor, and I see that as uh, probably one of the most critical questions ahead of us. Unfortunately, I think that Secretary Clinton did not go into the details she should have, uh, because we know that uh, Trump said that would get jobs for everybody, and there was no substance there. However, when Secretary Clinton did not go far enough, or very far at all, then people who were sincerely worried or out of work voted for Trump because they had to believe something. So my question to all of you is, you know, what, what do you see as the, the things that we can do to bring back a stronger labor force, one that is more open, one that is uh, re-energized? Uh, I think that's what's going to save, uh, starting with our cities, but basically everywhere. Well, I think that, first of all, you got to like more Democrats. Without Democrats, the labor unions go nowhere. Simple as that. And secondly, there, there has to be, uh, I believe, well, with the Democrats, we like Democrats in that we can change laws. Laws that are, I mean, it, it, it's laws that are at a minimum fair to organize labor. Now, some of us may want to maybe put the thumb on the scale a little bit to help organize labor only because it'll be an engine for the economy. As I said earlier, Donald Trump would not have, in my mind, from one perspective, would not have been elected if there was a $15 an hour minimum wage, if people could work. People, when I talk to people, I'm astonished that my hometown voted for Trump by a small margin, but it was typically a 60 to 63 percent Democrat president vote, and he won. And he won, and he won with women also. People are angry, they're upset, they know, they know that, I don't want to say the words good, they know they're, they're getting taken advantage of. And they know that. People are not stupid. And this whole notion that we're, we're not going to help these people with this income disparity is at the point where it's, it's like uh, it was during the French Revolution. Now, I had a new gentleman planning, uh, running for the White Oak Public School District. He happened to show up to one of our meetings. He said, well, I know we can, we can change a lot of things and save a lot of money. We can cut food stamps and start really about food stamps. I stood there and I patted on the back and said, you know what, Bill? You know what they did in France in the revolution when they didn't want to give them food? They cut their heads off. This is not, people have to eat. People have to eat, people have to work, and people have to be educated. If we're not going to solve it, you, you spoke eloquently on education. People aren't educated and they don't have food and their job is, is seven, eight, nine dollars an hour. They're not going to be happy, and they're going to just grab for straws for any BS that comes along, or con man, or malignant narcissist like we had in the White House. They'll fall for that stuff. I, I, I'm stunned at people I know. I have two cousins, Democrats, union guys, worked in, in organized jobs all their lives. So say to me, no, we're not voting Democrat anymore. We're voting Republican. Now, Force it, but the point is that you get people in there, you get vote, but you have to also get people talking. When I was at Bethlehem Steel as rank and file, you go to union meetings, you got a dose of the politics, what they're trying to achieve. And it didn't take me long, it's 19 years when I got hired, it didn't take me long to realize that boy, the guys that are want to help me out are all Democrats, and the ones that want to cut my wages, give me a hard time at work, lay me off, throw me out, figure out ways them to make more money and me to make less are Republicans. I don't think that's changed. But that's where it all starts. And we have to talk. You have to, you hear people, you, you, there's too many average people where you said, you mentioned unions. Well, the unions are in the country. That's why all these jobs are going overseas to the unions. We need, we need a Fox News, I don't know what we call it. We need another, we have MSNBC, but we need maybe another one uh, to, to spread the word. But it's, it's going to take a lot. It won't happen overnight. We get elected. One of you guys. We, we mean, whatever. It ain't gonna change in two years. It's not gonna change in six years. But we got you gotta keep pushing it, like pushing the stone on the hill. You, you just gotta keep keep the force against it. Because the workforce. 
if we look at two facets. We go look at current workers, we go look at future workers. Okay, as far as current workers, we all agree that the wage needs to be raised. Uh, we, we, have, we have to narrow that gap between the wealthiest earners and, and, and the least earners. Uh, so we have to look at the minimum wage issue. We have to make sure we protect collective bargaining rights. Uh, collective bargaining rights are predominantly a state issue. Or as I said before, a U.S. Congressman doesn't have, have a power or voice. But there's also a, uh, where collective bargaining does have a jurisdiction of the federal government is the National Labor Relations Board. Okay, the National Labor Relations Board under President Trump has been watering down collective bargaining rights. Okay, so there is ability to change that in Washington, D.C. So work at the National Labor Relations Board strengthens the ability for local unions to have collective bargaining power. Okay, I do believe unions have a, you know, have a strong history in this country. We should, um, should protect the right people to organize and protect the right to collect the bargaining to preserve the working conditions uh, and as it impacts them. Uh, I look at the, what happens to teachers, we mentioned the teacher, uh, how we have disparaged teachers and we have, you know, again, uh, as, as, as a society, as a political, as politicians, trying to discourage and put down unions and choose to do so by dispar disparaging people and their careers. Okay, that's just so wrong. Uh, so, so, so those, those issues are not for the future, for the current workers. For the future workers, as I said before, education is the only way out of poverty. By the way, education is the only way okay, to build a skilled workforce. Okay, we know those things. Right? Our current employees, we do need to be trained. Right? Folks, calls not coming back. Right? Like, we're investing in renewable energy sources, and despite what John Trump says, coal's not coming back, and, and leading, promoting that lie. We have to get over that. We have to create workforce development programs and retrain our current workers. Technology has changed that dramatically as well. Manufacturing jobs are not in demand as they used to be. Our children and our current workers need to be taught creativity and problem solving because the today's workforce is very different okay, than the workforce that we grew up with. So we have to acknowledge that and build those programs, build them for the current workers and build them for our youth. So the workforce development programs for teenagers and for younger children and make sure that if we can educate our students so they graduate with the skills necessary, they will become a skilled workforce. That's how you build the economy, that's how you build the military, that's how you defeat poverty. Can I ask what you you were a part of? I'm not anymore. I was in the future soon. PSCA. I think one of the most inspiring things to me as a candidate um, over the past few years was really getting to know the unions um, much better than I ever did before. And I feel like they're my lost tribe, that's how I sort of call them, because it's such a wonderful, wonderful group of people who come together um, as a community all the time to support their community through their work. Um, and that's a really, really beautiful thing. And What's so sad about the decline of unions over the past, let's say, 20 or 30 years um, is that not only are we losing that piece of community, but we're also losing the middle class. And really, our focus on unions is because we need to restore the middle class, plain and simple. Um, I was endorsed by just about every union last time. We're working together with many of them again um, already, and we'll keep working hand in hand. And as I mentioned before, I'm so excited about the AFL-CIO putting together an apprenticeship program in manufacturing, um, seeing the need in our communities. We've got the jobs, actually. We have a lot of jobs that pay a good wage um, if folks can get the skills and if big employers will hire union workers um, through union contracts. And, as you know, in this city, that's been, um, not to mention any names like the Double Tree, but you know, there's been, there's been issues over the past few years here in Reading. And so, um, you know, making sure that we're negotiating myself as a congresswoman to make sure that we're doing right by the middle class, because as I said, that is really the crux of what unions are all about. So. 